My name is uh, Christian Neumeyer. I'm employed by the TDF as a police engineer and also uh, taking care of the infrastructure, especially the tools that are needed to work on the Uber office, that includes uh, the tools for the uh, translation work that is done by our volunteers. I'm mostly known by my RSC handle, which is Cloth, but yeah, you can call me Christian, you can call me Cloth, you can call me Hey, you, I don't remember your name, because I can really relate to this situation because I'm very bad with names, so sorry if I get your name wrong or forget it immediately in the next day. So. It's nothing against you, it's just my problem of remembering things. So, and uh, you might know that we are using uh, Poodle currently as our main tool to do the translations, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Poodle development has stalled, and uh, people are now looking for alternatives to use instead. And Sophie did all the great work and did the research on what tools are out there which projects are using them and whether they suit our needs. And uh, she uh, came to the conclusion that Replate would be the best candidate uh, to use and go forward with. So the uh, main points that make Replate uh, our pick of choice is uh, that it basically was created as a drop-in replacement for Google itself. So all our must-haves are already available. So we want to allow people to do offline translations. We want a tool that is actively maintained, that is not just used by us. And we, uh, yeah, we want a tool that we feel comfortable with and not lose uh, many features. And uh, one of the uh, advantages is also a disadvantage. Like for example, the uh, website is aware of branches and is centered about repositories, which should make uh, getting a continuous flow of translations into the code base much easier. So the idea of WebLate is the translators do the change on the web interface, and WebLate itself pushes it to the repository, as long as the CI system or other trigger that will be the final thing and basically uh, create a whole uh, closed loop where uh, no human interaction is needed to get a translation into the And you have already said it is actively maintained, it is uh, offered as a hosted version, as a paid version, and because of the feature to have a paid translation work also tracked by WebLate, we get the benefit of having my statistics that can be used by the EMC to assess the uh, community involvement, how much uh, did a person translate, how, how the engagement is, and it's nice to have that we get along with it. And yeah, as mentioned, it is used by other projects already. And uh, Fedora is also uh, looking for a replacement for their tool, uh, which is Sanata, I think. And it's also end of life, basically. So they are also considering switching to that day, which also would be a good chance to uh, combine our efforts to make it work for a larger scale project want to say post uh, the translation tool. Now the uh, biggest uh, changes or uh, hurdles that we face uh, are related to the, the, the fundamental, uh, fundamental design of uh, WebLay. WebLay basically assumes you have many small projects and those projects have only one or two or maybe three files to translate, which is of course uh, not the case for LibreOffice, it has uh, over 100 files in the new single project. And uh, Put on the other hand, didn't care about any structure whatsoever, it just uh, looked at what files are in the directories and created uh, stats based on this. And this is results in a uh, confusing or overwhelming uh, display in the web interface that makes it hard to judge how far is the progress really because every file, every component is treated the same, no matter whether it only has one string or whether it has a thousand strings. And we have files of both in our system. For example, the files with the dictionaries only have one string typically. This is the translation dictionary for language XY. 
and then we have others that have thousands of strings, but both are displayed as 100%. And we can, of course, uh, do some uh, workarounds, and this is uh, yeah, a short-term uh, solution. For example, for the uh, overview, we can create the component lists. I'm not sure whether you can see this. So this is, for example, how a web plate displays the head project. So every single PO file we have is a, its own component. And the default display it only lists percentages, but uh, only if you hover over it, you see the, the word count. And for example, these two are pretty equal in uh, the string count, but there might be another one that is uh, completely out of whack. For example, here 20,000 strings, but it is the same with it's all 100%. So this might be a, a little hard to get uh, the information out of where to start with translation or where to put your effort in. And Kut, on the other hand, was using a, or is using a directory-based approach, so it just uh, collects everything that is in within this folder into one step. And this can, the further you go, the more detailed, the more split up it gets. And but you have uh, just this single overview page compared to having multiple instances on. One way to solve this initial overview uh, problem is by creating component lists. So this basically lets you specify an aggregation based on components. And I created a couple of those for the help project, where I created uh, those lists for the main modules. So this gives then a better overview, I think, of at least the main components. So, for example, we have almost uh, more than half of the uh, Calc section translated, or oh, this is not all languages, so it's not a specific language, but you get the idea. You know that if you are known in one module, you mean this is not translated at all, and you don't have to go through each file and see how many strips uh, are in there. But of course, if you then open this uh, component module, you still get all individual files, and there is no cascading system where you still would get an aggregation of the but at least I think this is a little help, but of course uh, not the ideal solution yet. And also one other easy fix to make it more apparent what needs to be done and what's not. This is change from the percentage display to a string count. So at least you can sort by the number of strings that are left in the trade instead of having a percentage. And also you can make the overview the list of strings much more you know, bearable, at least for languages that have a big translation completion rate already, but just this uh, enabling high completed translations in the options, and then you don't have to deal with the multiple pages of files just to get to the ones that still need some Also, it also has some more advanced dashboard features where you can set the default view to strings with the suggestions that you need to review or other things like that. Another issue is because of it, the uh, system is based on the components, there is no built-in way in WebLate to download multiple files for offline translations at once. And this, of course, affects some projects more than others. Some are only browser, some prefer to uh, only work uh, offline. But as a easy short-term workaround, uh, you can use the, the repository and get the files from there. But of course, this requires um, some uh, coordination in the, the local team to avoid duplicate work until the, this uh, uploaded. And one feature of the uh, web that is not yet enabled is the automatic pushing of strings to the repository. So, Again, this is something you need to be aware of right now, but uh, later, once the automatic push is enabled, it should be less of an issue. One of the features uh, web it has is the uh, propagation of translations within a project to different branches. So, right now, when you're starting a language, 
and you have uh, the stable branch, the still branch, and the fresh branch, and the master branch, so three, three, three uh, strings to translate. In Kutu, you would have to translate the master, for example, and then go to the 6.3 project, go to the string, and then copy the string from the translation memory and do the same for the 6.2 branch. But they would have a feature that would automatically translate the string to the all branches. But uh, we cannot use uh, this feature right now because this would require all branches to be listed under the same project. So you would get triple the uh, amount of component entries. And I don't think this is something uh, we should uh, go for. Rather, I would use the same layout as we have in Google now which means creating a LibreOffice UI master project, a LibreOffice UI 6.3 project, and uh, so on. And instead, uh, aim at uh, modifying WebLate to allow for the propagation to work across the project boundaries. But uh, this is probably a large change because yeah, it is in the fundamental workings of uh, WebLate, but still this is something uh, that should be Visible and not too much of it. It's not uh, any for the moon kind of stuff. So, this, I think, at least is my impression of the most, uh, most apparent drawbacks. But of course, there are also uh, a list of minor things that are annoying. At least uh, those have been reported by those people who were uh, uh, testing in the public instance yet. For example, one thing is uh, why you can uh, use uh, alternative languages in addition or in replacement of the English source string as, uh, uh, as a source language for your translation work. There is no copy button like there is for the English source string. But and similarly, Google uh, offers the way to copy XML tags from the source at the position you're in in the edit box, and uh, WebLate doesn't offer this one. And also, WebLate's own idea of languages doesn't match or isn't perfect either, at least for those uh, more or less, I don't want to call them minority languages, but uh, uh, lesser used languages and at least uh, languages that are not common to be uh, encountered in the geotypical project. But this is my thing, I think, and one of the, yeah, not. I think it's more important to have the UI working on all kinds of resolutions. There was a request to have it less wasteful to see more information on the on the web interfaces translate screen. And for translating itself, there's the send mode that basically hides lots of UI elements. But unfortunately, you cannot use this mode to accept or make suggestions. And also the one uh, minor thing is that you cannot manage your team yourself. So if you are a team leader, whatever the leader means for you in this context, you cannot give <coughs> people, you cannot grant them permissions to do translations. But in Google, since we are already having a full set of language teams, uh, this can be easily made So the uh, at least my way of uh, dealing with those annoyances is like this. So for the uh, not being able to copy the alternative languages, it should be pretty easy to add an additional JavaScript and changes to the uh, web template to just uh, copy the functionality from the English source string to the alternative languages list. But so I don't see any problem with that. Same for the uh, copying of XML tags. I think it also can be handled by some uh, custom JavaScript to, to bring that in this feature. Same for the mislabeling of languages, we just uh, fix a uh, web uh, language uh, database and then it should be good. The UI to wasteful issue is a little harder because, yeah, UI design is not my forte, but yeah, you can surely change uh, the elements, at least we have the uh, key ID which is specific to our project and appears on our strings and we can surely make this uh, less prominent place. There's no need for it to take up the whole line in the interface. 
like that, so we can really condense it quite a bit. And of course, we want also some kind of TDF branding, LibreOffice branding on the site anyway, so we will work on getting a CSS and it works better for our needs and make it easier for translators to work on smaller screens. Unfortunately, I don't have a solution for the send mode yet, but uh, it's not just us who are noticing that there's no suggestion feature in send mode, there's already a ticket in, but it's a tracker for this. But I think this feature will have to wait for a later date until the web late upstream actually implements it. At least I don't want to touch uh, this, this one myself. And uh, regarding the team leader cannot manage uh, groups themselves. As I mentioned, we have already a complete set of languages or those requests that come in via the mailing list to add new members or replace a uh, uh, abandoned project by a new member can all be handled by a uh, web page full of site administrators quite easily. So I don't think this is something that is urgently needed for our project. But as we send a note issue, there's a request on the web page issue tracker already to have this implemented because it's a useful thing to assign privileges by per language and not just per project. And uh, this can be easily handled by the group system you can set up, but of course then you still need to have a way to manage the teams themselves. Otherwise, at least when you're starting out with it, New set, completely new setup, it would be okay to have all the requests done uh, and uh, even if you cannot speak the language of the other team, it would be quite simple. Yeah. As I said, it shouldn't be a problem for us. We are lucky enough that we are already alone for quite a long time and we have a community already. So, and this is basically my uh, view of things as I got them by Gavin feedback on the mailing list. And this is the point where you say, no, I missed this or that, and uh, what you said is wrong, it cannot work, or it should be done differently. So, if you have any comments, any feedback. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe I didn't see, sorry. Uh, I was translating some of the sentence on the help, and uh, I found that even if I have not exactly the same translation in the memory, it doesn't give me a suggestion of a slightly different uh, sentence. That means Puto was able to, by similarity, suggest a, a translation memory entry. Uh, I didn't see that on, on WebLit. Yeah, WebLit also has a translation memory system, but yes. it is a slightly different one. So it might not be the same uh, amount of flexibility in terms of uh, what is a miss and what is still a hit. And also who has the advantage of having the previous projects already in the memory uh, database while the uh, web would start out with just the master files and the existing translations. So it doesn't have a, a larger corpus of similar translations to full data form. You think that uh once we evolve by yeah. doing more and more translation, this is it, actually good. It will get better and we can also add uh, the old translation memory that is on Google. We export that and import that into Google. So this is also something we can do. And the uh, has a dedicated machine translation section just like Google has where you can incorporate other services like for example the Amagama translation memory website or maybe even the one that was suggested now as an extension for LibreOffice, you can probably run this standalone on the web server as well. Okay. And that uh, translations from there. It also offers integration to the Microsoft terminology, but so far we are not using it, so this is also possible with Google. But yeah, you can add additional resources, well, machine translations or translation memory can be System credit. Also, Amazon translation services, Google translation services, but we are not using any of those kind. Suggestion. Uh, 
we we were talking about the uh, people working offline. Wouldn't it be an idea that you get for a string when it is a string or a model when it is taken uh, offline by somebody that you get an indication that it has been uh, it has been downloaded by that person and when it is uploaded again that it is disappearing? I don't think this, this is possible because downloading is uh, available for everyone, not just the visitor users. And this would be hard to track and also the purpose and why someone downloads the file is not clear immediately. But you can add comments to a string and maybe it <laughs> indicate that you are working on it. But it's, I think it's better to have it on a local mailing list or whatever yeah, you yeah. need to people use for it and their efforts to, to split up the work from this one. To complement uh, this question, if two persons happen to update the same content, will it, will it be detected at some point in time? If we try to upload the same file, then very likely, or if I update the template and someone uh, translates the same file, then it will get be resulting in a git merge conflict, and then I have to resolve this. But uh, can two different people, uh, persons, use uh, translate the same file? In the web UI, no problem at all. Uh, and if you are using the web UI, then you can just you just make the same. Can have two two people. Yeah, uh, sure. and if you are translating offline and you yeah, translate yeah. different strings yeah. in the yeah. file, then it also works. But if you change the same string, the second one to upload will get yeah. the error that there is a conflict and this change is more than for offline. Yeah. 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 Um, you can carry on talking for a few minutes while we set up the next. But go ahead. And... Yeah. Yeah. Can you show the uh, interface? Uh, or can you just tell us a bit what is uh, Zen mode and Over time now, so, Thanks a lot. Yeah.